Hail and Meshes Adventurers, welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spot King, and we are today in the awesome guide for you guys who are not very familiar with D&D, or if you just want to have a lot of fun in this game and don't worry about your companions. So in today's video, build for every companion from level 1 to level 12. Suggestions on how to build your party, how to respect your companions and where to find this NPC. And some tips and tricks how to use your companions in a fight with a full build. And as always, it will be almost completely spoiler free. The only time where I will show you some spoilers it's where to find this NPC who can respect your characters. And don't worry, it's kinda one of the first locations on the map, but you can miss this location. So it's not like a big deal, but I will warn you anyway. So first of all, how to build your party to be effective. Basic D&D party to be effective will consist of these four roles. Tanky front laner. Main role of this guy is to take damage and don't let your other teammates die. It doesn't mean it should be actually tank, it, it could be any melee character. Second role is of course range damage dealer. Third role is supportive character, it can heal or destruct enemies or increase chances to hit enemies for your party, debuff enemies and other stuff. And last but not least, some exploration character with nice perception. And for our characters, our companions, we can mix them just like that. So for our frontliner, it could be Lazel, Gitsyanki fighter. She can do a lot of damage, but of course, as fighter, she will be in the front lane. And while doing damage, she can eat a lot of damage too. Karlak is Zarel Tiefling, and she is barbarian. And this barbarian is again nice front laner. Barbarians got a lot of HP, that's why they can eat a lot of hits. For our damage dealer from the range, it could be Gale, human wizard, and. He specializes in a lot of spells, doing a lot of damage. Or it could be Will, Warlock. Our supportive character is Shadow Heart. She is a half elf cleric. And our perception guy is Asterion. He is high elf rogue. And he got nice perception. So that's like main roles and how you can build your party. So you pick just Lazel or Karlach for our front laner. And you can have, for example, Gale or Will for our back lane damage dealer. You can ch get Shadow Heart as front laner too, because she is cleric, she can be in the front lane with melee weapons like this maze. And she can uh, enhance abilities of your party, she can destruct enemies and heal your party. And Asterion for perception and other investigation stuff, to not miss anything. And when you're creating your custom origin, you can keep it this in mind. So for example, if you want to play like melee damaging character like fighter or barbarian, just... Uh, Ignore this Lazel or Karlach in your party and play with, uh, for example, Shadowheart, Asterion, Antwil or Gale. Something like this. I hope you get idea and let's level up these characters. And my main idea for this video to make it like quick reference video so you can come back to it in any time. I will leave time codes for every part and we won't go too in depth in every class. So that's mostly for those of you who want to just have fun in the game and not dive too deeply in your companions characters. But if you want to learn more deeply about these classes subclasses just watch videos on my channel i got guides for every class subclass or i will have them soon so let's go karlach first level two on level two you don't need to pick any choices you will just get danger sense it will help you in the dungeons against traps and reckless attack is nice attack for barbarians you will use it a lot more on that later on how you will use it in a fight. So on level 3 you already get additional tiefling spell, but most importantly you will get subclass. So for our subclass, for Karlak we will pick Berserker. It's like most easy and straightforward class. And all builds for all companions in today's guide will be like this, easy and straightforward. So Berserker will unrock Frenzy and that's like more advanced version of Rage. And you will get Frenzied Strike or Enraged Throw as bonus action if you're raged. I mean frenzy. So let's go level 4. On level 4 you will get additional feet and for our feet of choice I recommend to pick in tavern brawler and adding plus 1 into strange. And with this feat you will use throw a lot. Level 5 we don't need to make any choices, we get extra attack and fast movement so we move faster 
and we can do two attacks in one turn. Level 6, we gain additional rage, and while enraged, you can't be charmed, frightened, and calm emotions no longer ends our rage. On level 7, we get class future with plus 3 to initiative. Initiative is nice, and uh, for Barbarian it's cool because you will attack first in most rounds. Level 8 we can have additional feet and for now we pick an ability improvement and add in plus 1 to dex and plus 1 to constitution. So we round up our stats. And I use uh, like basic stat distribution for these characters that came from the start. Level 9. You just gain increased critical strikes. I mean critical strike damage. So in level 10 you get additional action and you can basically fear your targets. Next level. We get just class future, a relentless rage and we can't be downed. Instead we will regain one hit point once per short rest. So it's very nice because we will take a lot of damage as frontlaner and we won't be down. Next one. Last level. Level 12. So as you can see Karlach is really easy to play character easy to level up there's not too much choices if you're going for this type of barbarian and last choice we're making fit choice and if you're rolling with this big weapon then you can take a great weapon master or you can make stable choice to just add plus two into strange for my build i recommend to go for great weapon master it's like more fun and enjoyable style to play let's finish with carla so I guess it's time to level up our Asterion. So Asterion is a rogue. On level 2 he get nice actions and you can use disengage, dash and hide actions as bonus action. So you can use dash and then attack. Very nice and, and mobile class. So on level 3 we will be able to pick our subclass. And for easy to play subclass I recommend to pick Chief. With Chief you gain fast hands and this gives you additional bonus action. On level 4 our Chief gains new feet. And for feet we go as always just easy ability improvement stuff. Round up our dexterity and intelligence. While intelligence is not very important stat I will explain you later why we're doing this. So on level 5 we get just class future, uncanny dodge, and we will have half damage when we take damage. That's nice for squishy rogue. So on level 6 we get skills and we can uh, just pick whatever skills we like. And I recommend picking perception for our investigation purposes. And another stuff, uh, if you play an Asterion in dialogues, use deception. And if you're using him only as your like character for perception checks, and you don't need these deception checks for him, use acrobatics. It's nice when you're investigating some areas and you need to fall from the high ground, for example. So, rogue level 7, get just class future, evasion, there's uh, nothing special, it's like just fine future that will help him survive. On level 8, our stadium gain additional feet, and for this feat we're going to pick resilient and resilient wisdom. So, with resilient wisdom you gain plus one into wisdom and gain proficiency in wisdom saving throws. But for some reason my resilient is never working. Maybe it's because I'm leveling up these characters with messing up with uh, game memory. So just make sure it gives you plus one into wisdom and you will have rounded up stats. We rounded up intelligence to get this plus one into intelligence. And now we're picking resilient wisdom to have saving throws proficiency in wisdom. And wisdom is like most common saving throws that you will make. So we're going to level 9 and as level 9 we get just supreme sneak and basically you can become invisible for 10 turns as action. It's nice to use before the combat starts. So just some tips and let's continue. For level 10 as rogue we get a new feat and this feat will use ability improvement and max out our dexterity. So our weapons uh, scale up with our dexterity, so that's why we need dexterity at maximum. Level 11. Any ability checks with our skill of proficiency, lowest result, can be only 10. So it's very nice again for checks for perception and other stuff. So it's good, good stuff. Just pretty reliable passive ability. You don't need to think about it. And last level, level 12 of Asterion. All we need to do to pick our latest feat. And last fit for Asterion, I recommend just picking Lucky. You can add uh, additional dices if you need uh, saving throws, attack rolls and other stuff. Or you make enemy reroll their attack rolls. So it's nice to survive or to hit your enemy most of the time. And just like that we finished with Asterion. So now let's go and make build for Shadowheart. So Shadowheart is cleric but she's 
Trickery Domain Cleric is it's like pretty different cleric type and most of the clerics would like to be like light domain cleric and this will be like range damage clerics they can support your party or even do damage or life domain cleric it will be like super support super healing cleric and you can respect shadow heart laser i will tell you why and how but as trickery domain cleric you will get a lot of trickery actions and that's the first character that we need to make built on because other characters was like melee attacking classes so right now we need to make our build. For easy cleric build, just go with Bless, Cure Wounds, Healing Ward, Guidon Bolt and Inflict Wounds. Instead of uh, Cure Wounds you can use Shield of Faith. And that will be your early game Shadow Heart. She's like one of the first characters that you will meet in the game anyway. And before we level up her to level 12, let me explain you how you want to play with her actually. So to have easy time as Shadow Heart, you want to decide one of the two things first. Do you need to protect someone with armor class plus two or do you need uh, to give them ability to attack more often? So basically there's like two spells, Shield of Faith or Bless. This is concentration spells, so you need to concentrate on one of them at a time and basically if you think that uh, your tank needs some protection just go and put this shield of face for example on your Karla and this will increase armor class by two so we got 16 now we got 18 and this increases our chances to evade attacks by a lot but if you need to, to hit more targets use bless cool part about bless is that you can cast it on many creatures at a time so use bless again before the fight try to use it before the fight so we can use bless and pick any number of creatures around us so we can even pick lazel karlach and asterion now every one of these guys got this bless for 10 turns and they add in 1d4 to attack rolls and saving throw very nice buff before the fight and then when fights uh, starting you basically uh, most of the time don't rely on your main hand attack only when enemies come in melee range you use concussive smash but even that uh, in melee range better use inflict wounds it's middle range spell as bonus section you can use healing ward to heal your teammates and just in case you, they need it or if you need to some inflict range damage use guiding bolt it's uh, 4 to 24 damage very nice but this is all spells and require spell slots and you don't have a lot of spell slots on early levels and they rec recharge only once per long rest so, so sometimes just uh, save your spell slots and use sacred flame it's range damaging spell you need to pick your target and inflict some damage just like that let's continue building our shadow heart so when leveling to 3 we already got access to a lot of spells from level 2 spells and and some trickery domain spells that we will be always learned so nice spells is mirror image and you want to use this a lot only if you want to use shadow heart as tank and you don't want to do it actually you have enough tanks in your party even carla can do the job spells that you will use pass without trace you can use it and you will get plus 10 bonus to stealth checks to all your party so if you need to sneak up somewhere with four of your guys just use this for our spells we're not changing anything we're just adding one more spell from level four I mean from, from level 2. And that spell will be spiritual weapon. So you can call out weapon and this weapon can attack on your side. That's nice distraction and until, uh, additional melee target for your enemies. Let's go to level 4. On level 4 you're getting one more cantrip. And I recommend just picking the light to light up some things or maybe you need some dark vision for your party. So you get one more prepared spell and for one more prepared spell you can use Warding Bond. So you're on level 4, some enemies will become stronger right now and Warding Bond will increase armor class even more for, for your ally. So for first ability improvement, uh, go to ability improvement and basically round up strength and dexterity. So they like all even numbers. Level 5 will give you one more spell and access to level 3 spells. And for level 3 spell pick mass healing ward. Because uh, Shadow Heart is your supportive character in your party. So mass healing ward is nice because it's using only bonus section. And just as bonus section you can heal everyone around you. On level 6 again one more prepared spell. And this prepared spell will be revivify. So you don't need scrolls to revive your teammates. If they die they can be returned to life with just level 3 necromancy spell. And just before we go to level 7 let me show you and explain what you want to do as shadow heart at these levels. So again I'm not going too deep into all of these spells. I'm just explaining you builds that you want and can use. So just before the fight, you want to go and use, for example, Shield of Faith on your main tanky 
a lie. And for now, Karla uh, got uh, 15 armor class. You use Shield of Fate. So, Karla right now got 17 armor class, and it's pretty big for an armored person. And then you want to use Warding Bond as level 2 spell. So, Warding Bond. You kind of bonding with Karla. And each time she taking damage, you will take some damage instead. And that's nice because it will increase potential or tanky potential of Karlach. And while you're standing behind, you can still mass healing ward. And this will heal you and Karlach and everyone just nearby. That's how it works. That's basically what you want to do as Shadow Heart. You want to use these two spells and just go into the battle. Attack from the range with guys on bolt. Use some healing wards, mass healing wards and maybe summon spiritual weapon to fight alongside you. So this weapon will be in your party and will do some damage too. Let's go and level up even more. So level 7, we got additional spells, now we got level 4 spells. And on level 4 you want to pick Dash Ward. Dash Ward will protect the creature from Dash. So next time this creature will be reduced to 0 hit points, instead of dying it will regain 1 hit point. And this stacks again with your Karlach a lot, because now she can die like uh, two or three times in a battle and won't be actually dead. Every time she will be regained to one hit point and basically she can live just for whole battle never dying. And then you just take a long rest and reset all of these spells. So let's go to level 8. On level 8 you gain additional feat and for this feat we want to pick this resilient again, resilient wisdom. And we want our wisdom to go plus one. Sadly, I got some bugged stuff here. But this will round up our wisdom and give us advantage in checks, in wisdom checks. So next up, we got ability to gain some level five spells. And for level five, just big mass cure wounds. So again, you're kind of supportive, trickery domain cleric. For level 10, you gain additional cantrip. It doesn't matter, so pick whatever you like. Taumaturgy for some role playing stuff, if you will be in some dialogues with uh, shadow heart and for one more prepared spell you can go with spirit guardians from from level three this will call uh, spirits around you and nearby enemies will take some damage and for our spell we can go for flame strike just to in inflict some nice damage from 10 to 60 damage of fire and radiant damage basically so if you just need some additional damage that's nice spell most of the time you won't use it as shadow heart anyway you are kind of supportive cleric don't forget it and now we get access to level six spells and as our supportive cleric again we want to use hero's fist it's just nice spell to increase our hp before the fight we will have advantage in wisdom checks wisdom saving throws and we and everyone around can be poisoned deceased or frightened so just nice spell and it will give you additional camp supplies and for our cleric level 12 we thicken our final feat and for final feat we don't need our wisdom to 20 we better pick war caster because so we got some concentration spells going on and this will help us uh, and it will help us succeed on seven throws to maintain concentration on a spell and just like that we got our shadow heart build really easy to use cleric build so let's level up our wizard hello gale gale is a wizard and got access to a lot of classes but to have easier time with him just go and pick evocation subclass on level 2 you can learn 2 additional spells, we want to make use of magic missile as our main damage spell and we want some melee spell because uh, when enemies come in too close our spells becoming a lot weaker and uh, we probably will miss them so burning hands is our second pick and we changed our spells so we want magic missile as our range spell, burning hands as our melee spell, mage armor you can cast it on yourself to become less squishy, chunder wave it's like another melee spell and uh, burning hands come in handy when you want to just put enemies on fire and <laughs> don't shove them and if you want to shove enemies off you use chunder wave and last but not least a little bit more like controlling stuff so we pick sleep level 3 again in more spells and for level 3 we get access to level 2 spells, we begin Scorching Ray and Hold Person. And we are basically preparing this Scorching Ray. Level 4 Wizard, we gain one more cantrip. For cantrip we want again some melee cantrip, if we lose all our spell slots, so Shock and Grasp is a nice idea. For known spells we go for Misty Step and Magic Weapon for some supportive stuff. So we are preparing our spells and we need to use Misty Step. Right now maybe we don't need to use our Burning Hands no 
more and we can use our whole person and even mage armor won't save you too much at this point of the game for when you're going to level 5 level 6 so forget it and use magic weapon now we can use our feet again <laughs> ability distribution for all of these basic characters is pretty weird so we're using ability improvement at first and we round up our intelligence and constitution of course then we're going to level five we're again gaining more spell slots and it's level three spells right now so for level three spells we're picking fireball <laughs> and be cautious when you fire in your fireballs they can attack your friendly guys so your party is in danger when you're doing fireballs and another good spell is Glyph of Warding, so we now can prepare some spells, and basically it will be Glyph of Warding and Fireball, something like this. Level 6 Wizard, gaining subclass future, and it's potent cantrip, so your cantrips become better, we don't care about this too much. We can pick two additional spells, and right now it doesn't matter what spells you want to choose, so pick whatever you like. Maybe you want to have fun with Enlarge or Reduce, maybe you want to or Fall for some investigations when you need to fall from the high ground so just pick some fun spells at level 6 it doesn't matter too much we're going to level 7 and on level 7 we're gaining level 4 spells so at level 4 spells nice spell can be banishment and greater invisibility so we can prepare some spells again we don't need it and we can have banishment and greater invisibility right now we go to level 8 and at level 8 we should get additional feet yeah so our feet of choice at this level will be again very easy fit resilient and resilient should add to our strength plus one but we need resilient dexterity so we are not proficient in dexterity seven throws but now we are proficient in this because we now wizard with plus one to dexterity and it will round up our stats so we can use some more spells uh, again we don't care about spells too much at this point so we keep in our wizard really easy and straightforward we can use false life to just infuse some additional temporary hit points to our friends or you can use dimension door if you need to teleport just in battle you gain one more prepared spell we don't care about this too much so we can use this teleport for example level 9 wizard we're gaining two additional spells and now we get spells from level 5 and cool level 5 spells will be cone of cold and wall of stone so now we can get rid of this dimension door get our cone of cold and wall of stone just like that we continue to our level 10 and now we got <laughs> massive future empowered evocation so we add our intelligence modifier to our evocation spells very nice to increase our damage and yeah why are we actually picking evocation on this mr gale because we got this script spells so every time we use an evocation spells our allies automatically succeed saving throws against the spells and take no damage from them and that's the main idea so when you cast in for fireball you don't need to worry about your allies no more and because it's like companion guide most often i guess gale will be your companion and if you play in melee class it's really hard to go in and just decide what to do throw fireball at myself or not so cool funny spells it's concentration right now from level 5 and you can use wall of fire it's again evocation spell so let's use wall of fire right now we don't need sleep no more and we can use telekinesis we're going and growing to level 11 as a gale gaining one more spell i mean two more spells disintegrate of course a transmutation spell and chain lighting as our evocation spell and we want to use this chain lighting as much as possible it's very funny and cool spell but sadly we got only one spell slot from level 6 so we can use it only one more time only one time exactly and now we can pick our last spells from level 6 uh, cool spells is uh, freezing sphere for example sunbeam to blind your enemies or wall of ice so let's pick sunbeam and we got our last feat and as last feat you can pick spell sniper just as you, as you wish or you can keep it simple and go into ability improvement and get 20 in intelligence for consistent damage output and our last spell will be one that you can like for example framing freezing sphere just like that we got our gale ready so i guess i need to explain options with the gale a little bit so level six spells just no brainer chain lighting you pick chain lighting you cast it on enemy and all nearby enemies will be affected by chain lighting another level six spells that you may like to use are t freezing sphere 
that you can cast on some area and create this freezing field and don't forget your allies won't be affected by this because it's evocation spell or you can just use it to create portable sphere you can use it on yourself and you will get this spear just keep in mind it lasts only 10 turns so you can uh, give it to a lie before the fight and uh, a lie can go just in the front of enemies and use this sphere and won't be affected by this so your main idea is uh, gale to stand in the back and use your spells for example fireball so just go into the high ground and uh, use your spells fireball for large aoe damage ability if you need to make some adjustments to battlefield so enemies can't you know time to go in into some pass maybe they want to surround you just summon this uh wall of stone it's a really nice wall if you don't want them to pass through this or you can call wall of fire instead and this will create firewall they can pass through it but they will take damage magic missile never miss just put some missiles but most importantly don't forget you can use as bonus action just at start of the fight misty step to stand in where you want so just use mr step get to the best position of the fight with gale and use your spells you can use telekinesis on anyone and you can throw them whenever you want and you can use additional telekinesis for 10 turns without expanding spell slots so you can just throw anyone whenever you want wherever you want and they will have some damage and uh, glyph of warding very nice stuff you can use glyph of warding sleep put it on the ground so it will create trap so enemies can't pass through this place for example and use other dimension uh, spells like uh, scorching ray it's like shooting three rays of fire and main ability of wizard is arcane recovery so you can use six arcane recovery per day and you can recover some spell slots uh, five arcane recovery recovering level five spell slot and you can recover with last arcane recovery level one spell slot and they recharge one per long crest so you get like additional spell slots and if things going bad you can cast greater invisibility on yourself or you can cast it on a lie for example you want to cast it on Karlach. most of the time you won't cast it on here but maybe you want to do it and Karlach will just run around and if Karlach will attack anyone for example gale why not attack gale she will succeed or not succeed on stealth saving throw so she gain advantage first of all inflicting large damage but if she succeeds on this stealth throw she will be uh, still be invisible and as gale it's nice to cast this spell on asterion for example in the fight so let's talk with lazel and i guess it's time to level up her so lazel is more like easy character like our barbarian she's a fighter so there's not too much choices we just got action search and action search will give you extra action to use in this turn so basically treat it as extra attack if you need it you can use it one time per rest mistaken just like that so let's continue leveling level 3 that's where you pick in subclass for your fighter and for easy choices just go with champion champion is just most straightforward fighter it will get improved critical hit so numbers that you need to roll for critical hit while attacking is reduced by one and this effect can stack on level four we get additional feet and someone asked me in previous videos so uh, like what does this mean this effect can stack so we got this feat spell sniper and this will reduce number you need to roll for a critical hit while attacking by one again so spell sniper is kind of feat that should be used for spell users i guess but actually it's telling that you will just reduce this number by one so no matter you're using spells or not spell sniper will should at least should work on your critical strikes but again we starting with ability improvement and we want to round up our strength and dexterity to our strength and constitution we're going to our next level it will be level five we just get extra attack on level 5, same as Barbarian, so we can easily go to level 6. And we get additional feat on level 6. So for level 6, we want to take Resilient and Resilient in Dexterity saving throws. Again, as you can see, it's not adding to my Dexterity. I don't know why. Let's go to level 7, but it should add to my Dexterity, by the way. And here we just get some passive features, increased jump better proficiency in strange dex and con checks and we're going to level 8 we get additional feet and now we can get some 
interesting feats. So while we can pick ability improvement and just dump into Strange, we can decide what weapon we're using and we can use Great Weapon Master for now. But actually Great Weapon Master will reduce chances for you to hit enemies and uh, we can negotiate this stuff with some advantage stuff from other characters, but that could be risky. So nice uh, feat will be Savage Attacker. Savage Attacker will give you additional dice to roll when you're making your rolls for damage and basically will give you higher chance to inflict higher damage. That's why we're picking Savage Attacker. Next up, we're going to level 8 with our fighter and we get class future and we get additional chances on saving throws. So just easy, straight forward class again. On level 10, we can pick additional fighting style and we got great weapon fighting. And right now we want to pick defense to increase our armor class. On level 11, we get an extra attack, so nothing special. And on level 12, the last level, for Gityanki fighter, we get last feat and it will be ability improvement to get maximum strength and increase our damage output. Just like that, we built our Gityanki. So if you don't want to get into the details and have like easy fighting style game, just go and attack people, then stick with party like this. Something like Karla, Asterion, Shadowheart and Lazel. You'll have two melee champions like Karla and Lazel. They two will just go into the fight and attack with like big axe, big sword. Asterion can stay from behind and attack with uh, his uh, long bow, for example. And Shadowheart will stay somewhere in between and buff everyone. For Lazel, there's nothing to actually talk about. Uh, basically, all you want to do is Lazel. You can use uh, her like race ability Misty Step, you can teleport to her enemy and basically start attacking with uh, main attacks and additional attacks that will be from your weapon like rush attack. If you're proficient with your weapon and you should be proficient with your weapon, you can use them. In the fight you can use uh, action search and it will be available once per short rest so you can make one attack. Then you can use action search, you can make additional attack and you can have additional attack from your fighter style into one more attack because you're a level 12 fighter and that's basically all you do in a fight as Lyazel. That's why we're living here in the camp and taking Gale on our adventure. And this will be like more complex party and again your character can uh, fit any of these roles. And just before we will level up Will, our latest and last party member, let me show you how you can use this party in a fight. So first of all, before the fight, again, we want to use Warding Bond because it's until long rest, it will last forever. Basically for all day, we can use it on Karla, on our main melee like 10k guy. And second stuff that we want to use is Shield of Faith to increase her armor class by 2, so even more. Just like that, so we buff her. Next up, we use our level 4 spell slot, Dash Ward, and it's like late game stuff. So now she got one more buff and now she can't die actually. And last but not least, Hero's Fist. So you can use Hero's Fist as level 6 spell as Shadow Heart. So you can feast, you can take some fist stuff for your like long crests. But basically right now every party member got increased health points. And all of these buffs will last until long crest. But keep in mind only Shield of Faith is concentration spell. So you need to keep this in mind and don't use any other concentration spells if you want to, to keep a plus two armor on Karlach or maybe it's your character, maybe it's your barbarian or your ranger for example. So that's all preparation you need to do with uh, our cleric, Shadow Heart before the fight. Then with Gale you can cast magic weapon and again you can cast it on our Karlach for example. And now Karla got this magic weapon. So her weapon doing a lot more damage. And if you think there will be like fight ahead of you, you can uh, press G to remove everyone from the party and use Astarian as like different character and come from another angle to the fight. But we want to use this. Right now we keep things simple. So we press G again. Our party is together and let's go. So I will show you right now one of the fights in this game and how you will use this party. It's one of the early fights, so it's nothing like big spoilers. But again, I warned you. So let's go to the fight. So the fight started. Our Karlach is super buffed. And basically what you need to do as Karlach in a fight, you want to use Frenzy as uh, like fight starts. It uses bonus action only. And then when you use your Frenzy, 
you want to go and use your reckless attacks on your targets. Reckless attacks will give you advantage. So just go and use reckless attacks as Carla. And you can use a lot of attacks depending on how many actually movement speed you got. So as you can see, we get two attacks just in one turn. And just like that, we did everything we need right now as Carla. So we can end our turn. As Asterion, you want to use your height action if you can as bonus action. So use cunning action height, height, not just basic height. So cunning action height. And if we stay in hidden, we will get advantage on enemies. And as Asterion, you want to use your bow. And this will be sneak attack ranged. So from sneaky attack, you will have advantage against targets that is not aware of you. And basically inflict more damage with advantage, just like that. And then you can use your second bonus action to hide one more time or disengage, depending on what situation you are in. So you can get disengage, like uh, run away from the fight. That's why we pick Chief for two bonus actions. And we got luck points, don't forget, we can use them sometimes. We will be prompted with some ask stuff. Next one is Shadow Heart, so Shadow Heart. In the battle, again, you can summon this like spiritual weapon before the fight, or you can sp summon it just in fight, because it lasts only 10 turns. And uh, it's bonus action, so it's not a big deal. You just summon this spiritual weapon, and uh, it will help you in the fight. But most of all, you already done everything you need to do, and you can decide what you want to actually make. If you need some disabled spells more than plus 2 armor on Karlak, then use some polymorph on your enemies, or even banish, but uh, it's all like concentration spells. So most of the time you will use your guiding bolt to just attack your enemies, or flame strike if you need more like harder and stronger stuff. I won't attack all of these guys, just to show you. So we attack only one person at a time. Just like that, and everything, if, if something goes wrong, just use Mask Cure Wounds, Cure Wounds, Healing Ward, it's all actions, bonus actions, so you can use them a lot. And as Gale, you instantly, from the start of this fight, want to use Misty Step, and with Misty Step, you want to teleport to the best position, to some high ground position, and basically use your spells. I already explained to you what this spell's doing. So we can just go and use this fireball on these guys, just like that. And your spiritual weapon can fly, so you can use this action fly to go to some other areas. Don't forget that you can do it as spiritual weapon. And basically that's how you play with this basic party. And pretty basic builds. So, Will, our Warlock. On level 2 you get access to some spells and you definitely want to learn Hex. Additionally, you get Eldritch Invocations, and for easier time you go with Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast. We can replace our spells, but Armor of Agathos and Arms of Hader is very nice spells, so we check them and we don't need to change anything. Next, level 3. You gain an additional Pact, and we will pick Pact of Tome for our will to gain additional cantrips. Additionally, we get additional spell, and for our spell of choice we're getting Misty Step, for the same reasons as with our wizard. So let's continue. Level 4 Warlock, we get our additional cantrip. We can use Minor Illusion to just deceive enemies sometime. We get additional spell. And now we can use Scorching Ray as damaging spell. And we get additional feat. Again, as with all our previous characters, I recommend to just add plus 1 to Charisma, plus 1 to Intelligence to round up the stats. Then we go to level 5, and as our pact, we gain in access to Animate Dead, Haste, and Call of Lightning. We gain in one more spell, and it's level 3 spells, so because we're changing our rolling party as our casting mage, we use Fireball as our spell, and we get one more Eldritch Invocation. Cool Invocation for Will will be Devil's Sight to give you ability to see through magical darkness. Next up, level 6, and we get Subclass Future. 1d10 to an ability check if you need it. So nice, just space a future, we get one more spell. And this spell can be hold person, for example, if you need some disables to, to add to your party. Then we go to level 7, gaining one more spell. Now we get access to level 4 spells. Keep in mind, you are not a vacation wizard and you need to be smart with your fireballs. But still, Wall of Fire or Blight will be nice picks. We pick Blight. One more Eldritch Invocation. And we will pick Book of Ancient Secrets, it will give us three spells. 
Ray of Sickness, Chromatic Orb and Silence, so controlling and damaging spells that we can cast without spell slots, and we can do it once per long crest. Pretty reasonable pick. On level 8 as our Warlock, we gain in one more feat. And as always, we pick in Resilient, Resilient Dexterity to round up our Dexterity with plus 1. Again, it's not working right now. Maybe it's bugged, but it should add plus one. It's like writing, like increases your dexterity by one. And we're making one more spell. For our spell, we can use Wall of Fire. Let's continue. So our Warlock level 9 going with spells. On level 9 we pick in Flame Strike or Cone of Cold. But if you're us using Shadow Heart with my build, you still you got this Flame Strike already. So maybe you need to just diversify your damage types and use Cone of Cold instead. Additional Eldritch Invocation. And just to have more fun in game, I recommend Minions of Chaos. And we continue to level 10. I will show you all spells just in a minute. You gain one more cantrip, it doesn't actually matter too much, pick whatever you want, we gain one more spell, and this spell could be Hold Monster, very useful spell if you face some big monsters. Then we go into level 11, and we gain on Mystic Arcanum. So Warlock don't have this level 6 spells, but uh, he can achieve it by Mystic Arcanum. This level 6 spell won't require your spell slots, and that's actually great stuff, but you can use it once per long crest. If you want to have army of undead, then go with create undead, or you can have circle of death as nice damaging spell. We will try to keep this guy as like simple as possible, so circle of death is nice stuff. And one more spell, right now we can pick whatever you like, it doesn't matter too much. So let's, play fl let's pick flaming sphere, and our last level warlock, gain one more spell and great spell that i haven't picked yet is hunger of hazer i just totally forgot about it you can pick it uh, as soon as you got access to level 3 spells actually and eldritch invocation our last eldritch invocation actually can be like any fun eldritch invocation beast speech for example to speak with animals so you can use will to speak with animals and have some fun in this game and last feat will be ability improvement to add our charisma to a maximum so what is a Warlock? How to use Warlock? Let's discuss it. So as our Warlock, you kinda want to start same as Wizard. Just use your Misty Step and pick best place on the battlefield that you want to go in. Next up, to increase more damage to your enemies that you will focus, you can use with bonus action this Hex stuff. But it's bonus action and you used Misty Step as bonus action too. So you will use it on second turn. And then basically you don't need to think too much with like our Warlock, you can use basically Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast will be a nice damage option and it's on the cantrip, so you can use uh, this as much time as you wish and basically just use this like triple Eldritch Blast on level 12. As you level up, you will gain more charges. So at first you will have only one charge, then you will get second charge on level 5, around level 5, and then around level 10, I guess you will get third charge. So stuff that you want to do before the battle, you can animate dead. If you find any corpses, you can make a zombie or skeleton and he will fight alongside you. And you can use it as action, don't forget to do it. And you can use um, Conjurer Elemental, you can summon, for example, Water Elemental, he is very cool and strong dude and he will fight alongside you too. So this Elemental can basically like teleport into battle and attack your enemies cool and funny bro. Don't forget that you will get fiendish resistance and you can have resistance from force damage and it's like one of the only sources that will give you this defense from force stuff. And basically that's all you need to do, you will get access to a lot of spells but don't forget Warlock got only three spell slots so you need to have short rest bef bef before each fight or after each fight I could tell. So you gain your spell slots and in one fight you can have only three spells. So you can use your fireball for example, you can use wall of fire and just put some walls, disable enemies, or you can silence enemies if you wish to. So we got a nice balance of some holding spells, disable spells and basically damaging spells with this warlock. But most of the time you will just stand on the hill and use your eldritch blast on your enemies just like that because your Eldritch Blast will push enemies away and it's like really strong and cool stuff. So, what to do if you want to respect your characters? For example, you saw my builds on like Light Domain Cleric and you don't want this Shadow Heart to be 
trickery domain cleric no more. Now it's time for little spoilers where to find this NPC that will respect your characters. And we want to go to the waypoint roadside cliffs. So on roadside cliffs just turn left to these ruins and go to the front. And you will see this entrance into ruins. Maybe you already was here, but you need to go actually to the right side of these ruins and go down the hill. So maybe you remember this place, maybe you know this place, but you need to go to the right side of this place, go down. So you can go down over here and here's like secret door. So you need to go over here. This hatch is actually closed, but you can lockpick it with Asterion, for example. So let's try to lockpick it, and yeah, we got this 20. But don't worry if you can't get inside of this hatch, actually. It's totally okay, you can get to this place from other side of ruins too. You just need to go to the main entrance and you will be over here in no time. So I won't tell you how to get actually inside this oak door, there's like a lot of options how you can get over here but i will show you a map and this is like coordinates so you can think about coordinates it's uh, x uh, minus 294 294 and y coordinates is minus 260 just like this so maybe you even was over here and like one of the main reasons why we want to have nice perception guy in the party because we will have this passive checks and if we succeed on this check, so we will see this button, we should at least see this button, and this will open this script. So if we open this script, you will see this stuff you just want and uh, go basically rob this stuff. When you start robbing this stuff, the fight will start and basically undead will start their turn. So we just go and fight with them. Depending on your character level, it can be like a hard fight or easy fight. So as you can see, and that's uh, pretty advanced. They are like level three, level two undeads. But I guess eventually you will kill these undeads anyway. So after you defeat these undeads, you go back into the script and you finally open this stuff. What you will find here, this awesome wizard's guy. And after you speak with him, he will be kinda your friend. And basically he will leave actually, but you can find him later on. And when you will speak with him, then you can respect your characters. So basically you leave this temple and just need to use a long rest. So go to your camp. And this bro will be in your camp. So wizards here in the camp. So we can just use shadow heart, come to wizards, talk with this bro. We ask him what kind of service can Skeleton offer and he can review that kind of... he can heal you and basically you can ask can you help me change my class for 100 gold and just like that you will respect your character. You can totally 100% change the way your character plays, you can change totally your class but actually I don't recommend you respecting your origin character because many dialogues and many other stuff will consider them to be like cleric. But changing subclass won't really ruin your game a lot. So changing uh, like our shadow card from trickery to light domain, so she can fulfill two roles, range caster and even support mage, is nice idea. So when you just respect your character, you can have better abilities, better stats, better ability distribution and now you can have even more fun and balanced parties so you can go with Shadowheart as light domain cl cleric and then you can have barbarian, fighter and rogue in a party so you will have like range damage dealers with Asterion and Shadowheart if she will be light domain cleric and Carla as our barbarian and Lazel as our fighter and of course your main character can be this original character or you can just pick for example, rogue for yourself. And that's it for our today's simple easy guide for our companions. And if you want to build like uh, better classes for yourself, go watch videos on the screen right now and in the pinned comment when they are ready, I got guides for all classes, all subclasses on what you want. See you in the next videos, guys.